On to livestock balances, which is basically stock rec reconciliations. Yep. So if you've got a statement of accounts in front of you, um, we will start with the sheep uh, schedule of sheep on hand. So this is your opening and closing numbers. So we've given for the case study farm an example set of what people call their annual accounts or their financial statements. I think is probably the more the technical term. But is that the only place people can get these numbers from? Can they? No, is it permissible to use other sources? Yeah, if you've got a stock reconciliation available, whether it's in your notebook or through some of the uh, paid tools that you have, uh, such as Cash Manager or Figured, you can use those. Yeah. So that your financial statements are probably one of the most formal ways you've got of that, because that's been yeah. assessed by the accountant. But other ways are okay. We, yeah. Know, we yeah. Just need a good balanced stock reconciliation, which is what we're going to talk through now. Yeah, and we, we've had that in mind in, deve in developing this tool, that we would use resources that farmers would already, be ha already have. And that's why, for this example, we'll be using the statement of accounts. Okay. And so the, the key principle behind all this is we want to know what animals were on farm and for how long. So if the ewes are there the whole year, that's easy, but you'll see there's some on and off farm stuff there too. So the, the idea behind this is the key part of the calculation is what how much feed is actually eaten. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And so if animals aren't on the farm for the whole year, we need to know that to be more precise yeah. in terms of how much feed that group of animals actually ate on the farm in the given year. Yes. So right. I'll start entering the data in. Um, yep. So we'll start with a mixed age use. Yep. And this one's actually an interesting case study because, and you'll see this in some of your accounts, if you see that set of financial statements in front of you, the accountant here has valued animals in two different um, schemes for valuation, which they can do for various reasons. It's important you go through and add up the animals in there, so you're putting them in the, the correct class. I think in this case, there's two lots of two-do use in the um, in the financial statements. Yep, some under the national standard cost and some under herd scheme. So not every set of, a, of financial statements will have that. It's important just to add them together and stick in your, your open and close numbers. But there is a wee trick as well here, Ben. Yeah. So what we've done is we've separated out, so you'll start with your owned on farm and then owned animals that are off farm. So say that though, if you've got a June balanced um, date, that you've got a mob off farm at June 30. And then those that are grazed on farm. So your financial statements are, uh, you know, your capital, if you like, what you actually own, but are those animals on your farm? And we've done this here in the case study to illustrate that, that we're saying this farmer, this hypothetical farm, has 500 ewes that actually don't go on the farm at all. They may be share farmed, leased out, they're away somewhere else. So they're in the financial statements in the total ewes owned, but they don't actually spend any time on the farm. So you need to deduct them and separate yeah. them out here, which is Ben's gonna illustrate. Yeah, so subtract this mob of 500 from the total over here. And, vice, and, and the same goes for at close, because that mob are off the yep. farm for the entire yep. year. So that's 500 head that you actually own, but they're not actually yeah. um, causing any emissions for yeah. your farm. So yeah. it's important to, to net those out. Yeah, so you'll have a record of what wasn't on, on farm, but in your statement of accounts, they, all your owned animals would be totaled together. All right, and it's basically just automatically tapping these in. I don't want to distract Ben as he goes, but one of the key things here, the stock unit values, they're always up for a wee bit of debate, but they are fixed and automatically calculated here. Yeah, they? so for our calculations, we don't use them as an absolute metric of um, of a stock unit, but as a relative, as in a U eats this much relative to the other livestock yep. classes. And this helps inform uh, how we calculate the emissions in the background. All right, I better let you get on with that. Let's see. It's pretty hard to break this thing though. I mean, like you make an error like that, just delete it and go back yeah, in. It's not going to yeah. cause any major hassles. You can go back and correct errors, etc., if you find them later on. So I'll use these. Um, these. Uh, I'll come back to talk about these hoggets here. Um, yep. I'll just complete this out. So you can see here, no hoggets on hand at open. We've got a line up here, all animals are, light, are aged up at close. This is this aligns with uh, um, the sort of standard accountancy yep. practices. 
So these 406, you see there's no line for lambs because there are no lambs at open because everything gets aged up at close. So only hoggets come in. So these 406 here and these um, 1,500 ewe hoggets were lambs within that year they get aged yeah. up. So that's what, you know, in the vernacular, probably people would still call those ewe hoggets ewe lambs in, you know, 30th yeah. of June on a lot of farms. But for accountancy purposes, they are actually classed as yeah. ewe hoggets. And say if this was a June balance uh, farm, these hoggets other essentially get sold as prime hoggets because mm. they get aged in, in your accounts, yep. they get aged up at close. But in that June to September period, they'll be yep. sold. Yeah, so they might be winter lambs, for example, somebody's exactly. taking through, but they are called yeah. hoggets on, yeah. the, on the box. So. so your accountant will age everything up at close. So, so we can I'll put just, all... Yeah, just sorry. Men just yep. mention, so these 1,500 ewe hoggets have come, been aged up from lambs. And born the previous spring. Yes. And this automatically tallies, so we've got... Now this is the wheat trick again, 8,031 sheep there, but you add in the 500, 8,531 which is exactly tallying there, you'll see with the opening stock on hand in those financial statements. Okay, so dairy cattle, why have we got dairy cattle in here? This isn't, the key thing is that this should not involve any milking platform land, so why are the dairy cattle in here? Yeah, so if you've got effluent management, you've got different uh, emissions factors, plus those milking cattle have a, a higher feed intake, uh, and therefore they have a higher emissions. So ours, our calculator has been designed to work for the non-milking cattle, so essentially your grazers or if you're raising some uh, some heifers up, so to, so that we can account for the full business, we've um, we've included this section in here. But this do, this isn't applicable to milking dairy cattle. Yep, so you need to exclude those. But there may be some sheep beef farmers have an investment owned cows that bought on some dry cows to rear or carry through a winter or something. But the main one will be what we're doing here, which is some grazing uh, cows in the middle of winter. Yeah. So at June 30th, there was a mob of 230 uh, milk mixed age dairy cows, and at close, there was a mob of mixed age yeah. dairy cows. And you'll see the movements in uh, one of the later screens we come yeah. to. And then we've also got deer in here as well. 